this thing no longer works properly. Greetings, the Astro 30 here again. This DSO shell by JYE Tech or DSO 150 as it's called, which is a 15001K, um, has failed. It's no longer receiving any signal from its analog board and displaying it on the screen. Well, that's not quite true. It actually did at one point, uh, but was intermittent and didn't display again. What am I talking about? Well, so the other day I was messing around testing that meter and I wanted to see what the sine wave signal was coming off to test the frequency uh, range of that meter and realized that this was not displaying a signal. It would display a trace, but it wasn't displaying a sine wave. So I'll try and demonstrate what it's doing. See, it boots up fine, but it's not actually receiving any signal not even from its own internal one kilohertz square wave uh, generator apparently press that yeah that doesn't do anything so i've got the ts amp at 0.1 of a volt but yeah then it does weird stuff like that and the trace sort of buggers off so I have no idea what's going on with this thing. So I'll play you a bit of video from the other day, which I did record. However, the DSO does not, and this AC-DC ground switch doesn't work anymore. It's stuck. I mean, I can't even get the square wave off of its um, own test port. So, yeah, cool. Okay, so I took the DSO apart, and I've squirted some WD-40 into this switch and it now works now so I'll just temporarily connect these boards back up together and we'll see if the oscilloscope works now unfortunately this DSO no longer works so it's either been blown up or it's gotten dropped and f***ed itself but yeah it no longer works I can't get it to work wow the edge of that board is getting red hot um, crikey. So there's a definite problem here in this um, interface board. So I'm pissed off now. And so that's what happened. Basically when I had this thing apart and the two boards interconnected, the board at the bottom, the analog board, twisted at an angle and came into contact with the board underneath. And there's a capacitor on the side here, I think it's C14 came into contact with an SMD resistor underneath the main board. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it, uh, unplug it, and I'm going to take it apart because it's an intermittent fault so there might be bad solder joints in here. I mean the shorter capacitor that I did wouldn't help me as much. But I managed to find the original instructions. So on page three, uh, I've got all the setup procedure here to verify all the voltages so I can do the test once I've reflowed some joints on the analog board and the main board um, and then we can see if it makes a difference if it doesn't it makes a video I'll try I'll also replace that capacitor that was shorted because something was getting very hot and handily enough I actually managed to online find the schematic for this thing so I might just uh, leave this on frame so you can take some notes. No, I'm just joking. If you type in DSI 150 schematic into Google and press images, it'll be about the third or fourth result along. So it's very easy to find the schematic. But what's the area of interest for me is the area that's shorted on C14, which is this 100 microfarad capacitor here, this is on the negative AV volt line. Uh, so this is what's powering the two op amps on the analog board. This is actually an IC that gives you a split 
supply from a single supply. It's an ICL7660 for reference. Anyway, so the negative rail here was being shorted on a resistor on the main board. So anyway, I got three new 100 microfarad 16 volt capacitors. It's not the same profile as the one that's in there, but I'll certainly lay it over on its side on the board. But we're gonna take the DSO apart now. Okay, this is about probably the fifth time I've had this part. And it's getting slightly frustrating at this point. So this just comes off the top like that. I'll lift that out and pull that panel off. And this comes out at an angle to disconnect the two boards. Now that's that board out of the way. Um, I should have verified if there was actually a signal coming off of that, shouldn't I? That might have been a good idea. So for temporary purposes, I'll put this back together. I believe this meter should be able to measure frequency. I'll just make sure it's in test mode so it's going to be outputting the signal. So I one there. Um I had something there. But yeah, no, there's nothing there. I set the amplitude to 3.3 volt. It is saying we've almost got a kilohertz there, so I do know that the DSO is definitely outputting a test signal. It's not registering it on the display. Okay, so back to taking this part. So there's my analog board there. There's the ICL7660. Now something was getting very hot on this side of the board. So it was either, probably most likely this chip was getting very hot. Funny thing is, when I did actually have it hanging up in the air, after it shorted, I was receiving a signal. And I thought, well, I'll put the thing back together before it fails. And put it back together and it failed. Now, this is the capacitor that came into contact with the resistor on the underside of the board. It was one of these resistors he alongside here on the main board. But it didn't take anything else out, which is amazing. So what I have to do is I'm going to replace that capacitor and reflow all these other solder joints. I mean... Yeah, that one's suspect. That one's definitely suspect. So is that one. They don't look that great. Especially this capacitor here. It looks very dry to me. Um, don't forget, this was assembled three years ago or more. So, yeah. Just keep that in mind. But I'll certainly reflow those joints. Okay, new capacitor's in hack job, but yeah, what happens. Resolder as many joints as I could underneath. That looks suspect. Um, so now I suppose it's uh, plug the two boards together and test voltages. Right. With the thing switched into ground, the negative probe on DG ground, which is here, across V+, plus, wherever that is, uh, B plus. If I can get it to stay there, we should have close to 9 volts. Yes, AV plus, which is there, should be around about 5 volt. Yes, it is. V negative should be... Where's V negative? I did see that a second ago. V negative. Yeah, well, that's not right. It should be minus 7.86 volt. It is not. AV negative. That's the soldering line. Yep, there's our problem. That should be close to negative 5 volts. It's not. So, that indicates to me that that is dead. So, yeah, unfortunately I can't fix it. 
the input board is no longer working. It's missing a voltage. Just for shits and giggles, V1 should be zero volt. <laughs> it is not. V2 should be zero volt. It's five volt. V3 should be zero volt. Where is B3? Right there. No, that's 2.2 volt. V4 should be approximately 1.65 volt. Yeah, that's way too high. So, yeah, there's our problem. The thing is not producing the correct voltages. I don't even think I really need to go any further with this because um, I don't think I'm ever going to get it to work. Let's put that back in there so it doesn't short anything. Um, Yep. The uh, input board has completely and utterly had it. So at this point, it's it's worse than that. It's dead, Jim. So this is not going to be fixed anytime soon. I believe that negative, uh, that, uh, what is it called? I've lost the schematic now. It's supposed to be the last page. Why is it not only the last page? Well, there it is. The ICL 7660, I think it's called put. Shut up, Iron. It probably doesn't help that it's, um, that it's, uh, got shorted. So that's, that's probably my fault as well. But it, it wasn't measuring anything in the first place. And considering those voltages are wrong, yeah, now my trace is gone. So, that's pretty much definitive. This cannot be fixed. Anyway, I'm the Astro 30. It's unfortunate, but that's what happens. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. You can always follow me on Facebook. The link is in the description below, as usual. Anyway, this is the Astro 30 saying, see ya, have a great day.